Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. Welcome to Game 7. The pursuit of this trophy began when they reported to training camp in early autumn. Now they have played through winter and spring, and on this, the first full day of summer, the Houston Rockets and New York Knicks will determine this basketball season's NBA champion. It has been said repeatedly and with validity that the Knicks Rockets series lacks the artistry we have come to expect from the NBA Finals. But what has become clear is that this series now has a dramatic character of its own. The Knicks and Rockets bring to this arena, this one last time, league leading supplies of passion and resolve. And while this year's champion may not rank with the Celtics, Lakers, Pistons, or Bulls of the recent past, New York and Houston are so evenly matched that Game 7 was almost inevitable. And it also seems almost inevitable it will be in doubt in the last few minutes, just as the first six have been. Now for some background. Houston fans probably prefer league history to local history. On the league side, no road team has won the seventh game of an NBA playoff series in any round since 1982. That's 19 straight for the home team. But on the local side, no Houston team has ever won a championship in a league that still exists. The Oilers won the first two titles in the old AFL. The Hockey Arrows won in the WHA. But other than that, it's been a litany of near misses for the Oilers, the Astros, the Rockets, even Hakeem Olajuwon's University of Houston Cougars. Title Town USA, this is not. The Rockets are slight favorites to change that tonight. As for the Knicks, if they're to do it, why shouldn't it be the hard way? After all, this is their 25th playoff game, the most any team has ever endured, and their third consecutive Game 7 of this postseason. They found a way against the Bulls and the Pacers, both times at Madison Square Garden. To win this Game 7 here at the Summit in the Finals would be in every sense a crowning achievement. Well, these two have been the center of attention throughout this series, and both players have had some special moments. Even though Patrick Ewing's scoring and shooting percentage are down from his normal 24 points a game and 50% from the field, his defense, rebounding, and shot blocking have been instrumental in getting the Knicks to this seventh game. But his outside shot has been too frequent and inconsistent, and if it is not on tonight, he must get to the basket for better percentage shots. Now, Akeem Olajuwon's numbers have remained consistently outstanding against the best defense in the league, and a big key for him has been when he makes that quick, decisive move before the Knicks' team defense can react, it's almost unstoppable. And even though Akeem has not been dominant on the defensive boards, his effort, ability, and shot blocking show why he is the defensive player of the year. And for these two to help their teams tonight, Patrick Ewing has to shoot the basketball better, and Akeem Olajuwon has to rebound more. And for Pat Riley, it is a chance to coach a championship team for a fifth time during the course of his career for Rudy Tomjanovich it is a shot at a first NBA title at this time there are no magic words that a coach needs to say it comes down to this nine months of preparation for one game and Marv there are really only three things that each team can control tonight and that's how hard they play how smart they play and how much they play together so on the second day of summer, there is still basketball to be played for the Rockets. It is their 105th game of the season. For the next game, number 107, the winner will be crowned the NBA champion.